Well, howdy, 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 y'all. Teresa here and just me and the critters. I'll do a quick critter, critter cam of the moment, which would be Charlie Ed, Charlie Ed. He does have a head down here, I swear. Right there. Right there is a head. Right there. Right, Charlie? What are you doing, Charlie? Are you being all happy today? Are you all happy? Are you a happy boy, Char Char? <gasps> Poor Charlie. Oh, what? What are you doing, Charlie? What are you doing, huh? Are you being all happy this morning, huh? Are you being a handsome boy? Oh, my goodness. Him so handsome. Him got fed and he has fresh water. And he got their treats. They were all happy, right, Charlie? Charlie? Oh, Charlie? Are you ignoring me now? Oh, my goodness. Why are you ignoring me, Charlie? <gasps> what? <laughs> what? Oh, I know. Such a handsome boy. You made a handsome boy, right, Charlie? So, anyway, <clears throat> that's a Charlie. <laughs> They have rough lives, don't you, Charlie? Anyway, it is March 15th, 2017. And I know somebody said yesterday I said February. That's how out of it I was. But it is March all month long. It is Wednesday afternoon. It is 1.26 p.m. on this fine, beautiful, sunny day. And let's see. Uh, let's do the weather. Weather is cold out, cold for us anyway. It is 51 degrees, real fill is 46. The high will only be 59 and the low will be 33. Yeah. So that means we're going to have to have the heater on again tonight. We've been having to run our little ceramic heater for the last few nights. Because I've been getting really cold. <coughs> Excuse me. Get out my little... I have upgraded from my cheat... My little notebook to my planner now. What I use for a planner anyway. Watch, because some of you will go, That's not really a planner. It's my type of planner anyway. So, anyway. So I just write down notes each day anyway. So, you guys know that we were both sick yesterday. And, um, I just kind of laid around for the most part, um, and, um, I didn't feel like eating or drinking or anything. Brad made me drink stuff, um, which I'm, I'm grateful he did. We do that to each other, you know, like push the fluids. Um, and, um, he brought home, he was going to make me homemade chicken noodle soup, but we really don't have the room in the fridge for it. Uh, so, and he wasn't feeling well. Anyway, so I didn't want him to be standing there making me soup. So he just went ahead and, and bought me a couple cans of soup. And um, uh, that's what I had for dinner. I had a can of soup. Oh, he had bought a pizza for himself for dinner. So, uh, you know, because you're never too sick for pizza. <laughs> so, and then uh, we had I had to go... And back fairly early because he'd been working day shifts. So, um, I went back there. And, but I did do some looming yesterday, honey. Pull up my hats. Pull up my hats. This is a small child size hat. And I wanted to show you guys. Okay, the, the brown that you see all through here is, um, alpaca yarn that, um, a friend gifted me with um, and then another friend had gifted me with this eyelash yarn which I put in in here another friend had gifted me with this black with the gold on it and then another friend yet yeah, had this is part of a Karen a cake yarn so this is all donated yarn so that's what I do with it you know if you donate yarn that's what I do um, and this is a baby hat, and again, 
The cream colored is donated, and it is homespun. I love homespun. The black is, um, well, I can show you on the inside. The black here is another type of homespun, and I incorporated it with the fuzzy part with that more of that eyelash yarn. So that is a baby hat. And then I got an adult hat done, and again, I used some of the the uh, black uh, speckled homespun, and then on the top I used uh, I used up the rest of my light blue homespun. Um, those are both yarns I I purchased. The blue variegated is again yarn I purchased, which is uh, Loops and Thread Prisma, and then the where you see the pops of color is. Um, uh, Donated yarn, which is a lovely different pastel color. So, yeah, so I uh, uh, got three hats done. And that last hat is a large adult. And I normally keep them in, I was keeping them, remember, in um, Ziploc bags. And now, since I'm making four different sizes, I'm keeping them just in grocery bags like this. Um, and so I have six hats so far, and you guys know I just donated a big donation of 83, so, yeah, that's what I like to do, though. Um, so did that, um, and, uh, today I feel much better, as you guys can tell. Um, I feel a ton better. Uh, the only thing is, is that my, uh, asthma is acting up a tiny bit, and I've got a little tiny cough. And my throat is just minutely sore, which is not anything more, all of that together, not anything more than that it could possibly just be some allergies with me. So, um, Brad still is, mm, he feels a little bit better, but when I just talked to him, called on his lunch, he said he was feeling really ucky at work. Um, and I reminded him that I always keep some Tylenol in the leave and Pepto tablets in the glove box of the Jeep. And so I got him to grab some uh, Tylenol for his headache. Um, so uh, that's good. Uh, We've got to get him over that. Um, and, you know, he just, like he said, he just needs another down day to really rest and stuff. But, you know, it's inventory week, and they do this once a year, so it's not going to happen this year. Yeah. And when he gets off work tonight, he gets off, well, 4.30 or so, then we need to go into uh, Crawfordville and go to the store. Um, you know, we need to go do the grocery shopping and uh, all that fun stuff. Uh, well, we need to stop at Winn-Dixie first and pick up our prescription and stuff. What I thought my topic for today would be, with nothing earth-shattering, was is in case anybody is interested in what I have in my looming bag. Now, if you're not into looming and not into yarn uh, stuff at all, you might want to just click off for now and go, okay, well, you know, if you're not going to say anything was of interest. And I can perfectly understand that and appreciate that. So, but for those of you that um, do knitting or crocheting or looming, and maybe you've been curious, or just been curious about what I have in my bag and how I keep stuff, then this would be the one for you. I have two bags I carry with me, or that I keep my stuff in, and I take it to the back when when Brad's got to go to bed, because essentially the couch is his, his bed also. It's a pull-out bed. So, um, <clears throat> I have one, and I just bought this. You guys will recognize this. It's just one of those cheap dollar Walmart bags um, that a lot of people use their groceries in while well, right now I had my headphones because I got a clean house after this. I keep my yarn in separate Ziploc bags. This is all yarn I use for hats. Um, and you'll see some of it's been wound by my husband. Um, so, you know, this is how I keep all of it. You know, I have so I have that bag, this bag's got some others, and this bag's got more types, 
And I have a couple more bags like that. This bag. This bag. Some more. And I just kind of match up usually a solid with um, a variegated. And, and depending on what pattern I'm going to be using. It's a good way to keep track of what yarn I have, you know, left of stuff. Because what will happen is <clears throat> every so often as I go through my yarns, you know, and use it, then I need to, that, that's the bag that all the yarn that I'm using right now fits in, or lives in. Um, as I use that up, then I will need to go up front. I have a large clear tote. It's the only one I keep inside now. And it's got assorted yarns. It's got some of the um, uh, specialty yarn. It's got the variegated. It's got the solids. And I work from that. And I go up there and I pull up. Or I ask Brad just to pull up. You know, I'll say, can you pull me up two, two uh, uh, skeins of solids and two skeins of variegated? <clears throat> and that's what we do. And then I have another bag here. And this one is what I keep all my tools in. Um, this is my ad large adult hat loom, my sandwood, um, that I use all the time. That Deep Martin gets me with. I have my pills in here just because I, you know, cook it in bath. These are the three other looms that I use. Um, as you can see, the orange is the um, uh, small adult, the blue is the child size, and the green there is the baby. So I always keep those in my bag, you know, because I go through. I And then I have a notebook that I write down different patterns and and different different projects I might want to do. Um, this is a old um, prescription bottle. It's got all my my needles in it, all my yarn needles, and some safety pins in case I need to mark a stitch or something. This is a assorted bag of uh, whatnots. It's got some thread. It's got some buttons, tape measure. It's got um, one pom pom maker it's got chapstick in it. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. I have this crochet hook for when I have to do something with it. This pouch here has different pom pom makers in it. That's a, that little baby one, I guess, just didn't fit in it, but there's a couple more of them in there. I've got that in there. Um, what else do I have in here? Oh, I have my big pom-pom maker. A pair of scissors. And my hook. My favorite hook. Um, another pair of scissors. I mean, my little folding ones. My big pom-pom maker. And then I have a few pins and... Uh, what? Oh. Like, if I'm doing a mermaid, I use this to do the arms and stuff. So, and that's, that's it. So, that's what I have in there. Oh, and then I always wrap the very, very ends of, very, very ends of the yarn, you know, that you have, um, like, when you're tying off a hat. Then I tie them, I, 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 uh, Tie them all together, knot them all together, and I wind them on here. And then when this gets pretty full, usually when I get done with about eight hats, then I have enough on here to do a baby hat, you know, or or to incorporate it in with another color and and run it. So and so I waste I waste literally nothing, you know. <clears throat> And, you know, I've been, I know I've been talking a lot about donations and stuff, um, but, you know, I go through a lot of yarn, I mean, you know, and, uh, you know, it's just, like I said, I don't ask anybody, um, to go out and buy any, but like I said, if you saw that grandma, uh, is getting 
you know, is where she's not going to do anymore. And you guys are like, what the heck are we going to do with this yarn or something? <clears throat> I would be the, I would be the one that you would, uh, you know, or maybe you bought a bunch of it and thought you were going to be the next yarn goddess and then decided it wasn't something for you, which happens. And I've done that with other crafts myself. So anyway, I just thought I would show you guys a little bit more about how I keep my stuff. Um, and how I, how I use it, um, like I said, and nothing ever goes to waste, and then if I have the little, little pieces of yarn that are too small to tie together, I still save those, I have a, um, let's see if I should have it right down here, that's where it's supposed to live, hmm. where is it, I don't know, ah, Supposed to be right down here. Oh, I see. It's over there. Anyway, I'll just show you. I have, excuse me, I have one of these empty. And I've taken the, the uh, wrapper off and marked on the top. And what it is, is I just use this. Uh, this one has got actually wipes in it. But I use, I clean this out after it's empty. And then, you know, this opening is great. And I put all the scrap yarn, all the pieces that are too short to tie together. I put them in there, and then I will use that. I will mix it in with my stuffing. If I if I get an order for like a jellyfish or an octopus or um, you know a sea monster or you know a mermaid, and so then again nothing goes to waste. Now if I was on my own property, I would be putting those little scraps out for the birds. Um, and I thought about it here because I've seen the birds gathering nesting material, but I don't know if the management of the RV park would be not happy about that. And I could see their point if they weren't, so I'm not going to. So anyway, you hear Missy drinking water. She drinks water like a big dog. It's incredible. Oh, update. Stevie's son came out of surgery fine. Um, and he's doing really well, except for he's in a lot of pain. Uh, they're not giving him much for pain, uh, you know, and, and having your, your chest cracked open is very painful. But I'm assuming that maybe the reason they aren't is because, you know, it also restricts the breathing. So, um, he's doing okay. She's doing okay. She still hasn't been able to sleep or anything, uh, really, because, you know, when you're when your son is in so much pain and stuff. But, um, you know, they're hanging in there. So everybody continue to pray. This RV park is incredibly full right now. Holy crap of seconds. It's, I think it's spring break here in Florida right now. And this RV park is, as my friend Ragged07 would say, asses and elbows. It is just... It hasn't been this full up since Memorial Day. It is just, yeah, so, you know, it's been very busy. Somebody's playing their music, their bass really loud, too, which is unusual to hear around here, you know. But, um, yeah, it's been, it's been, uh, like I said, really, really busy. The, the plus size is that, um, it's been cold enough, so just staying inside, so, you know, anyway, you just, you know, you just take it for what it is, and, um, you know, I just keep hoping that, um, in time, we will, um, you know, find, uh, some housing, which would be so nice, uh, to have a pool kitchen again, and be able to actually bake cookies and stuff the normal way, and, uh, um, you know, be able to let your dogs outside, you know, and, and, uh, have real furniture and stuff, that would be nice. Brad and I dream of having recliners, so it'll happen, it'll happen, I know it will, I have faith it will happen, you know, there, there, yeah, like my good, my our good friend Ken said the other day was, you know, when bad things are happening, you know, 
you know, that this too will end. It's just like when good things are happening. When there's good times or bad times, eventually they'll, you know, sort themselves out. I call it all the ebb and the flow of life, you know. Sometimes you're on a high wave, sometimes, you know. <laughs> so, but anyway, I have faith that, you know, things will work themselves out. I mean, you know, we came down here and we didn't know what the hairy heck we were doing. We'd never been down to this part of Florida. You know, yeah, we were in for some surprises, but I'm very grateful that we did it. I mean, um, you know, I... I wouldn't move back because um, we really like it here. Not saying there's anything bad about Wyoming. It's just we really like. We need a major change in lifestyle. We were and, and this is what we wanted. And is it has been hard. I mean, um, living in an RV um, has been a challenge. Um, but we we've, we've we've managed and um, uh, you know. Um, I have really learned some valuable life lessons having done this because um, it's been a very humbling experience. Um, and uh, you start to lose kind of sight of yourself. Um, you know, if you're around people that all they seem to care about is money and stuff, you start to kind of feed into that. And um, this has been a very humbling experience and made me kind of really take a big step back and go, you know, not to be so judgmental of people. I didn't think I was judgmental, but then when I took a step back and going through all of what we've gone through, it's like, I really, you know, sometimes I was, you know, not as patient and not, and not as, um, uh, you know, I need to be more humble, you know, about. Uh, life and life experiences and, and differences and, and all of that and and stuff. I mean, you know, we all have our own story and not to assume that you know somebody's story until you've heard them tell it. You know, not from just what you see. Because look can be very deceiving. And, and also, too, it's, it's in the thing about judging how somebody looks because you judge somebody on how they look, and you never even talk to them. You know, I mean, <clears throat> take me, for instance. Somebody looks at me, and they think I'm probably just a nothing. Well, and I don't think I'm just like something, something. But, you know, I have a few good qualities. But somebody would take a look and go, well, that's just an, an old, fat woman. Let's just be real. That's what they think. This is just an old, fat woman. You know, she's got gray hair, she goes out, she doesn't, she doesn't wear makeup normally, you know, she dresses for comfort, so, you know, and I don't ever wear, you know, designer anything, I mean, and there's nothing wrong with people that do. And there's some of, of you ladies that I see that are just so well put together, you're, you know, very stunning and, and stuff, but they're just not me, and it's just not my lifestyle, um, you know. I'm just very down home and, and a homebody and stuff, always have been, you know. And so to look at me, you wouldn't know that I do artwork. You wouldn't know that I love to loom knit. You wouldn't know that I love to get on the phone and talk about yarn and talk about button, you know, with my good friend Linda, um, you know, or anybody else. You wouldn't know that I... have am pretty sarcastic and, you know, can, you know, um, can be pretty funny, you know, if I get, get going with the right person, we can go back and forth and stuff, you wouldn't know that, that, um, I'm pretty young at heart, um, that my husband and I, as Ken puts it, still like to act like teenagers and stuff, and we like to have fun and, you know, pester each other. You know, you wouldn't know any of that. You wouldn't know that, you know, I love, love, love my animals. And we've given up a lot to keep our animals and, and, and everything. And, I mean, so why judge? And in turn, why judge that person that maybe is, you know, decked out in all the designer clothes, very well put together, very well manicured and stuff. And you may think, oh, they're probably really snobby. 
I mean, I mean, I used to probably used to think, well, I'm not gonna really try to talk to that person because why would they want to talk to somebody like me? They probably just look down on somebody like me, and you never know, they may, or they may be the nicest person you ever want to talk to, and you know, so. Never, like they said, don't judge a book by its cover because you never know, you know, what that person's like. Don't judge that person that looks dirty and dis, um, disheveled and, and stuff because they may be the nicest person ever, you know. I know sometimes when I'm, when I come on here, sometimes you know the difference. You guys have seen me. If I've been cleaning house and stuff, I'm all, you know, it just happened like today. I haven't, I haven't started cleaning house. I'm doing this video first and then I'm going to clean the house, you know, so anyway, that's all I got to say. Um, you know, just. Take a step back. Don't be so judgmental on people because you never know when you're talking to them what they're like. I mean, don't judge on their appearance or anything, you know, um, because we all just need to love each other more. We all need to just be there for each other anymore. I don't care how much money any of y'all make. I never ask. If one thing you'll find, I never, ever, ever. Ask anybody how much money they make, you know, or how much money they have, or anything. Um, you know, uh, like you guys see this ring here. It, I'll tell you straight out, it's fake. It, it's zirconia or whatever they call it. I would never allow my husband to buy me that big of a diamond. Not that there's anything wrong if your husband has. You know, that's great. You know. I buy these inexpensive, inexpensive rings, and I wear them for a year or two, and then when they get all all nasty and stuff, then I will, you know, order a new one. Um, I have my original wedding set. You know, it's a very small set. We were just starting out, but it is very near and dear and precious to my heart. Um, I just don't happen to wear it a lot because, frankly, it's a little too small, and... Um, I don't know, I kind of like wearing different ones, um, it's like, this is another one that's just, it's just a, a um, what do they call that, costume jewelry, now this one is real, um, and it's got some, um, uh, black and gold, and stuff, so, you know, but I mean, it's not an, an expensive ring or anything, it's, you know, but, um, you know, like I said, I'll never ask you how much money you make or how much money you don't make. And I never, ever, ever talk about how much money my husband makes or doesn't make. And I just, you know, I've even had, like, my parents used to ask me um, how much money my husband makes. That's not their business. That's not your business. I have two rules of thumb. I never, ever talk about sex. You know, my sex life with my spouse. You know, I don't talk with other people about that, that nobody, they don't share our bedroom, they don't, that's not their business, um, and also I don't share our financial stuff, I mean, what goes on between my husband and I is kept, he's my very best friend, and, uh, you know, we don't, like, even if we have a disagreement, you know, I don't go and tell other people, and that's just me, that's just how we work. Uh, you know, could we, we'll talk with each other about it. Now, if I couldn't talk to him about it, yeah, then I would need to share with somebody. Anyway, that's all I got going on. I've rambled long enough. Probably got you guys sleeping. Probably. Well, anyway, I hope everybody has a great day, and I hope that um, you're safe, warm, and dry. I know a lot of you on the Upper East Coast are really, really getting slammed. Um, so please be safe out there, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Oh, wait. I love you guys, and I do cherish your friendship so much, and I think you're awesome. Wow. Now, bye.